You've given me a few minutes just to talk to all of, uh, all of you in our NASA family about emergency preparedness. Um, NASA recently participated in a FEMA exercise called Eagle Horizon that was a part of a continuity of operations and government exercise that we do annually. And I became aware of some things that concern me about our family preparedness, and I wanted to talk to you very briefly. You know, we in NASA, we're an incredibly unique organization. We're the only agency in the federal government that's responsible for the safety and well-being of people not only here on Earth, but uh, off this planet. So um, my experience in the astronaut office, uh, my experience as an active duty Marine, uh, always talked about the importance of family preparedness and to make sure that we had a viable family support program. And I have concerns that ours right now is not uh, as good as it ought to be. So what I'm asking all of you in the NASA family, whether you're out on the West Coast, here on the East Coast, along the Gulf Coast, uh, up on the, the, you know, the Great Lakes, Think about the, the natural disasters that could occur in your area. Think about attacks that could come like 9-11 from outside forces. And talk to your family about your work and what they need to do to prepare for the unforeseen. Uh, develop a family preparedness plan in your house. Uh, have an emergency supply kit available. Most people who live along the, the, the Gulf Coast always have an emergency kit for hurricanes. I, I'm not sure whether people out on the West Coast think about uh, earthquakes and the like, but have an emergency supply kit at your home. Think about a family communications plan. Where are we going to meet if an emergency occurs and we're all over, the, all over town? Uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to call each other on the cell phone? Just think about those things. If you have pets, think about a pet preparedness plan. How are you going to make sure that they're taken care of when you're spread all over the place? Uh, and then if you have family members who have special needs, special needs preparedness. The most important asset uh, for us to successfully complete our mission is that our people, our families mainly, are taken care of so that we can come to work and feel good that if an, if an emergency arises, our families are going to be taken care of. So I would ask you again, sit with your families, think about what you would do in an emergency situation. I hope that you'll embrace and support the Family Preparedness Program as we all get better prepared to deal with these emergencies. Know your stuff. You know, know what it is that you're going to do, know what it is that you're, you want your family to do if an emergency arises. But most of all, be prepared. 23 minutes before the hour now, here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than a thousand feet across, feels its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029, and we'll see it up there. Closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the road bo Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path and set it on a collision course. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule little bitty chance of that happening. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule little bitty chance of that happening. And talk to your family about your work and what they need to do to prepare for the unforeseen. Uh, develop a family preparedness plan in your house. So know what it is that you're going to do. Know what it is that you're, you want your family to do if an emergency arises. But most of all, be prepared. Be prepared. It might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England, or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with the force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits. If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. But it's something that we have to take seriously. This is the first major threat from a giant meteor or, or asteroid. Were it to hit us, do we know what it would do to our rotation around the sun and the, the spinning on the axis? Will well, it, it, will, it will definitely affect the rotation of the Earth as it goes around the sun. The immediate impact would be a gigantic shock wave going out maybe 50 to 100 miles, then firestorms going out to hundreds of miles beyond that. Firestorms. And then meteorites raining back down on the planet Earth. So the devastation would be on the order of uh, 500 to 1,000 miles. Think of a bullseye, a bullseye containing half the United States. That's the potential impact. 
The wild happen. card is also the atmospheric disturbances. It's going to come right, <laughs> right to the outskirts of our own atmosphere. Mm. Friction is going to take place, and that's unpredictable. We simply don't know how it's going to react as it whizzes through the atmosphere of the Earth, and that could affect the second pass. And that's why we're keeping our fingers crossed. Yeah. But isn't the world ending in 2012? The Mayan calendar seems to indicate. Well, if you look at the Mayan calendar, it actually says that it's cyclical, and we could be witnessing a rebirth. No. We should be celebrating then. And personally, I'm going to be. I, ho I hope to be around in 2013. Well, news from the future. 2012 is going to be weird. Something's going on at NASA. It's a weird story. The NASA administrator, Charles Bolden, talked to personnel last week about preparedness. But to be prepared for what? There are some clues. When you listen to it carefully, there were three things that kind of leaped out at me. The first was his reference, his very strange reference, to a personnel off the planet. Why didn't you just say the guys and gals in the space station? Do we have NASA personnel other places in the solar system? <laughs> Good question. Was, was that a hint to a secret aspect? It's a very curious phraseology, and by, by looking at this, when you see the video, of course, the, the uh, visual is, 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 is an important part of the story. His body language, I mean, you obviously watched it. What did you think of his body language? I, I, I thought the whole thing was weird. Well, there's, there's a context. I mean, we've gone through a hell of a spring. You know, there have been horrible tornadoes in Alabama in uh, Joplin, Missouri. There have been, you know, uh, the problem of Fukushima, the threat of radiation. We've now got, you know, Fort Calhoun, which is kind of teetering on the edge of, we don't know what because no one's telling us really anything. We are living in a very uncertain world and uncertain time, but he made specific reference that it was part of something called COG, C-O-G, Continuity of Government. Now, Continuity of Government, is what you do in case you've got World War III, all-out thermonuclear exchange with somebody, or an asteroid takes out the entire western United States or eastern. In other words, it's not something trivial. It is to keep the, the government at some level functioning in secure locations where they can come up to the surface or back on the air after the dust has settled, maybe literally, and try to reestablish the United States of America. This is not trivial. And then, of course, it's against the backdrop of this whole incredibly weird business going on on the net around Comet Elenine. And that, again, gets back to Bolden's very careful use of language, not terrorists. He talked about outside threats. This object, regardless of all the stories going around, is unique. Nothing like this has happened in our lifetime, astronomically. And there are major clues inside NASA, which we have been able to ferret out, that the guys in NASA know something that they're not sharing about this object with the public. Remember how he talked about to get prepared for emergencies like 9-11, and then he talked about outside threats? He didn't say terrorism. He said outside threats. Words are important. Words convey specific meaning, particularly if you're talking to the NASA family that already has some inkling as to what you're talking about. So specific phraseology and specific words will trigger the briefings they've had that we're not privy to, but the coded language is meant to communicate the big picture. Outside threat. I think we're in for an extraordinarily intriguing fall. There were a couple other things that kind of leaped out of his message. Um, the, the specific reference to pets. When was the last time, George? <laughs> Never. Why is the head of NASA going out of his way to single out pets to be taken care of? George, this has a extraordinarily weird feeling. Okay, look at the Earth distance, 1.812. Elias right now getting nearer to us by 300,000 miles per day. In about a week, that number is going to be 400,000 miles per day, and it's going to continue to increase. You're going to see more and more volcanoes going off. That's your sign to wake people up. You have 33 volcanoes erupting right now in the Earth.
And that number is going to continue to go up as we move along in the timeline. A column of smoke in southern Chile reaching six miles into the sky and three miles wide. Ash falling on the surrounding countryside and neighboring Argentina. Scientists say a new vent has opened at the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii, sending lava shooting as high as 65 feet into the air. It happened when part of the crater floor collapsed. And our meteorologist, Jackie Jarris, is here with more on what's happening. This thing has been erupting for a long time, but this is yeah. new. Right. This is, yeah, this is a new fissure, basically, or a new eruption, a ring of fire uh, that has developed in the area. And you know, we keep calling it a comet, George. I don't think it's a comet. I mean, the numbers I lay out during the conference show me to an odds of millions to one. This thing is under some kind of intelligent direction, and I know how that sounds. Oh, no. I would okay. not make that statement if I couldn't support it with the numbers. And it's also the professionals are saying, oh, it's so dim, no one's even going to see it. Look, if this thing is being directed here by someone for some reason, and we could have a lot of fun discussing potential you know, scenarios, then as it gets closer to the Earth, August, September, it could erupt into the most spectacular object in the night sky close to the sun inside the orbit of Mercury because it's going to be closest on September 11th, and just that day alone should raise real eyebrows about the odds of that happening by chance. Tagline FBI CIA alert. Update June 2011. The following information was taken from Cosmos Online. A chilling report prepared for President Medvedev by Minister Sergei Yukov of the Russian Defense Ministry. Regarding the building of an additional 5,000 underground bomb shelters in Moscow, the Defense Minister warns. Even though progress is being made, the appearance of the new comet Elenin in our solar system means additional resources will have to be added immediately as the 2012 timeline for completion may not be soon enough. Sparking fears. Minister Sergei Yukov says in this report, quote, Based upon the new orbit calculations for Comet Elenin, it appears in all the likelihood that this celestial object is under some type of intelligent control and will approach Earth much closer than originally thought this coming fall season. An interesting note about the Comet Elenin is that the American space agency NASA has stated, quote, Because of the possibility that the comet's orbit does slightly deviate, there is no guarantee that the Earth will be missed. Comet Elenin was discovered by scientist Leonid Elenin on December 10, 2010. Comet Elenin was traveling very near the ecliptic plane at more than four astronomical units from the Sun and was headed inbound towards Earth. Its original point in orbit where it's nearest to the Sun was calculated to occur well inside Earth's orbit at about 0.45 astronomical units or 42 million miles from the Sun. This was to occur on or about the 5th of September 2011, making it visible to the naked eye in the pre-dawn skies in the constellation of Leo. Most ominous in the minister's report is his assertion that the comet Elenin appears to be in direct contact with the mysterious Jupiter-sized planet discovered beyond the orbit of Pluto which also is headed inbound towards our Sun. End of Cosmos Online information, these reports may spark increased hopes and beliefs in the possibility that the intelligence controlling these monumental events are none other than Almighty God and the foretold Kingdom of Christ predicted in the Bible. Millions believe the true names for these upcoming events are the Great Tribulation and Armageddon. Regardless of what one believes, buckle up and be wise and not deceived. We are certainly in for epic earth and government shattering events of biblical proportion. The immediate impact would be a gigantic shock wave going out maybe 50 to 100 miles, then firestorms going out to hundreds of miles beyond that. Firestorm. And then meteorites raining back down on the planet Earth, so the devastation would be on the order of uh, 500 to 1,000 miles.